this lesson, this is not saying here for I am. I am a part of the Seneca Baptist Church. Man, what an awesome time this to be alive and living in the world that we are really in. And so give God the glory and all the honor and all the praise that he's due. And so we thank God for each and every one of you. Um, take the time out to be the schedule to to into the broadcast. And so this is an IEP. We welcome the IEP uh, Bible study. Once again, this is Pastor A.K. Barnum. The I is for investing in others, A, action to serving, and P, promoting unity in our community. And so definitely, we uh, thank God. And also, I wanted to let you know, uh, on May 7th, on May 7th, 2022, we are here, amen, uh, on our location, on our campus, uh, with the uh, Mid-South Food Bank. So if you're in the Arkansas area, you live in Arkansas, I think you have to be Arkansas resident, Arkansas that you can come by, amen, at the church, and we'll be giving away uh, food uh, between the 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. That's May 7, 2022, here at the Iron Park location, uh, Iron Park Church, uh, the food bank, uh, this south as well uh, as the East Arkansas District. We partner, amen, giving away food and once again. That's 11 o'clock to 1. And this is 600 Vanderbilt, West Memphis, Arkansas. 600 Vanderbilt, West Memphis, Arkansas. And so as, as we go further into the lesson, I won't be long. I uh, just want to spend a little time with you. And, 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 and so into your life. Uh, minister to your spirit. I'd like to open up with a word of prayer. Yeah, my Father, we thank you, God, for this time that you've given us and that you allow us to share in your word. I pray, God, that in this moment, God, that you'll speak a word each and our hearts, God, and let it continue to be strengthened. Let it be a seed that falls on the ground. Help us to be stronger and wiser for you in everything that we do. And so, God, we just want to give you glory. We want to give you honor and all the praise. Thank you for who you are. We love you. So bless this time that we share your word. Let it be fruitful and beneficial to those that are listening and hearing. And so, God, I thank you today. And so we hope that you will be able to apply the word from you and our heart that will help us along this Jesus journey. So we give you glory, we give you honor, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, so real quickly, you know, I always kind of want to go, go through, and this is uh, from the standard of the you know, articles of faith and dealing with what we believe as Christian, our Christian belief uh, in so many areas, and so uh, standard um, belief. And so we want to deal with that uh, in our articles of faith. Before we go into the meat of our lesson, uh, we definitely I like to deal with the uh, grace in generation, grace in regeneration. Man, that is awesome. Thank God today for his amazing grace. He does uh, regenerate. Uh, and so all of us and everybody, God, give God the glory for everything that he's done. I like how, how he's brought us out of situations and made our life brand new. I don't know about you, but I'm hardly happy. Yeah. That he did what he did, that did for me and what he continues to do for me and has written in my life in every way. And so, a grace and generation, we, we believe that the uh, regeneration or the new birth is a change of heart brought by the Holy Spirit, uh, whereby we become partakers uh, of the divine nature and holy disposition is given, uh, leading to the love and patience of Christ. Oh man, all of us. Uh, know that we need that to, to operate in the spirit of love because God is love, amen. It's not so much what people uh, do to you, amen, that counts in God's eyesight, but how we treat to them, and that's our responsibility and accountability to, uh, is how we treat people. We know we each other based on how we treat others, based on our response in everyday life. And so, definitely, uh, so we're going to be love, we're going to be patient, patient of when you through a whole lot of things. Uh, patience is a part of your humility uh, in life, and it helps you to stand this course, you see what you need from God. Uh, so, in that way, uh, it's the righteousness that is tied to it. It is a work of God's free grace and condition upon faith in Christ and made manifest by the fruit which we bring forth to the glory of God. And so, at John 3 and 3, it says, Brother, brother, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. So understand that 
Uh, we thank God for the grace of the generation of amazing grace, amen, that helped us along this journey, each and every one of us. And it's by grace of God that we uh, kept to God calls us home. So thank God for his grace and our merited favor. It's definitely a re re regeneration that gives us a new birth, a uh, new insight that helps us with new eyesight um, and insight on, that, on this journey. And so we want to definitely uh, keep God up front and seek him first in all that we do. Amen. And so I'm just still dealing with uh, growing a spiritual garden, growing a spiritual garden, growing a spiritual garden inside of me. So then with spiritual maturity, how uh, am I going to uh, mature as a Christian in my daily walk and conduct uh, with God? Not only just know the word, but also live the word. How can I live or uh, be a blessing, not just for myself, but to bless those around me in the community in which I reside? Uh, and I want to be able to um, make an impact wherever we go. And I hope that you're a person that desires to make an impact. And so I said, well, I'm not around a whole lot of people. I don't have an impact. A whole lot is just take one. I remember a story a long time ago about a young man that was walking along the seashore. He was picking up starfish and, and throwing them in the water, picking up starfish and throwing them in the water, picking up starfish and throwing them in the water. And an older gentleman came to him and said, hey, young man, uh, you're just a teenager. What are you doing? Wait, 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 what are you doing? And, I, and he says, I, I, I'm, I'm just picking up uh, scorpions. And the one I'm trying to see the scorpions. And the other man said, I've been around for a long time. And, and I'm going to see scorpions on this beach. And you're not going to be able uh, to save all of them. So the young man uh, he picked up another uh, The young man he picked up another scorpion. And when he picked up that starfish, uh, he made up in his mind and he told the elderly gentleman, he said, look here, um, I picked up this one and I'm thorning in the water. And if I can just save that one, I believe that my living is not in vain. And so if you can just make an impact on one, uh, one person's life. And how many understand when you make an impact on one, that one person will go and make an impact on another. Your name don't have to be in the highlights or in a big time game in the Hall of Fame for God to recognize your efforts. But you can be able to bless one. And if that one can reach another one for the kingdom of God. God is going to be pleased with your efforts. So keep on going. You never know what God is going to do uh, in your life and through you. Just be available uh, for his use. And so, real quickly, so in the spiritual garden, trying to grow stronger and be all that God called us to be and created us to be, that that's my desire. I hope that's the desire uh, that you have in your life to be everything that God has designed and created you to be. So we want to spiritually grow. And the Bible says we reap what we sow. If we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. If we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully. If you want to grow spiritually, you have to sow spiritual things in your life. And so we're sowing in the spiritual garden. And one of the things that we want to do uh, as we're dealing with rose, we, we, we're dealing with rose is a squash. And one of the things that I want to squash in my life, and I hope that you want to be able to squash in your life if you're struggling in the area, and that is procrastination. Procrastination, I want to be uh, better and stronger and wiser uh, than I was the day before. And then I, don't, I want to be able to, to complete tasks and so that God can get the glory out of my life and my hand, and my work for him and his kingdom. And so when we think about um, procrastination, Ecclesiastes, if you have your Bible, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, and it says, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, whatsoever thou find, thou, thou hand find it to do, do it with thou might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. And so we have to be willing to, to be able to go full head on and charging for God while we still have blood running warm in our veins. Time is winding up on all of us. No man knows the day nor the hour. Life is but a vapor. You can be here one minute and gone to next. 
And so we understand, our old preachers say, on your will this day, you're sick enough to die. And so I want to be able to give God my all while I'm here. And I hope that you want to give God your all. And so we go from wall to wall. Amen. If you say you got a busy schedule, I said, I'm going to move. Uh, stop saying I'm busy and says I'm productive. Amen. Productive, being a producer for God. And so procrastination uh, will hold up your productive side of you. And so we want to deal with some things that are going to help us to get over procrastination. And so one of the things that 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 we try to do in our life, and, and it's not perfect, but all of us still growing, is that you set up a schedule, a daily schedule, a to-do list, and try to mark down and set your goals for yourself and what you want to accomplish in the day and asking God, amen, and praying to God, God, just give me wisdom, revelation to do uh, what you have me to do. And so that you can be able to manage your time, your day better, because time doesn't wait for any of us. Amen. Times look like the older I got, like the time just continuing to fly. Amen. And so the world is moving fast, and we don't want to be at a standstill procrastinating about what we should do. Amen. And we're, to, and, and we're putting it off, uh, putting off tomorrow, and then we live up in the land of those woulda, shoulda, and coulda. And woulda, shoulda, and coulda will come by your bedside on your dying hour and begin to speak for, for, to you. And we don't want woulda, shoulda, coulda uh, come to our side, amen, and speak to us in our, uh, our time when God is calling us home. We want to be able to say, uh, we thank God for this journey. I did all I could while I had time. I utilized this life the best, God. And so please be pleased with me. And so hopefully and prayerfully you will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful of a few things, but come a lot higher. And so definitely Proverbs 13 and 4. It tells us a, a slugger's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. So it's teaching us to be diligent about our business. Don't begin become slack when we procrastinate. Uh, that, then that means that some area in our life has become slack. And so uh, we always um, have an appetite that is never filled. But we want to be diligent so that we can be satisfied as God continue to move us in our life. I, you know, I like this. Um, Proverbs 14 and 23. It says, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talks lead only to poverty. And so many times uh, you can talk about it and procrastination comes in many ways. You're just talking and talking, but no action going. And so definitely we want to be about business. Amen. Not only do we want to talk to talk, but we want to be willing to walk to walk. And that's where you see the miracles come and flow in your life. Because we learn to walk by faith and not by sight, giving all that we can to God. And understand that, you know, that slackness destroys uh can destroy the work in our lives. And so definitely we want to be working for the kingdom and give him, give God our work. God don't want us to be um, lukewarm. He would rather for us to be hot or cold. If we lukewarm, he will screw us out of his mouth and we want to be able to be hot and on fire for God. And so we want to shake off uh, procrastination. So therefore in my spiritual garden, uh, we're squashing uh, procrastination. I hope that you will partner with me and join with me um, squashing procrastination in your life. Um, and certainly we, we know that God is able and we continue to trust in him and we don't get caught up or boasting on things that we did yesterday. And so many times we, we, we can mess up and get to glorify what we did yesterday that we forget to continue to uh, go further and push harder into the future, trusting God that uh, he still has more work for us to do and so understand that we're standing strong for god and we want to give him our best and give him uh, all that he deserves out of who we are um understanding that we can't even make we can't make excuses and so many times when we procrastinate we have this tendency to make excuses luke 9 luke 9 luke 9 59 and 62 Luke 9, 59 and 62. It says, he said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. 
Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. And so definitely we want to continue. We start walking with God, doing our best for Christ Jesus. We want to put our hands to the plow and continue to sow, press on, move on, plow on in the name of Jesus. Because I believe, you know, that God is a, can pay. He is a um, rewarder, the Bible says, of those who diligently seek him. And so everything we do, uh, we continue to seek God's hand, put away procrastination and seek God in everything we do and seek for him to move in our life and not make excuses, uh, not come up with reasons, amen, and let our reasons overtake us. And so reasons, uh, we want to be able to put them um, out of our sight, reasons that will hinder us because of procrastinating. We want to break that thing down and put down the reason so that we can reason with the power of God with us in us and move us to purpose and move us into the destination that he has for us. Our Proverbs 24, 30 and 34, it tells us, I went past the field of a sluggard and past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and I learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. Amen. And so we can get so comfortable. We can sleep all day and and become so relaxed and lose the fire and desire, the passion that we need inside to carry on and accomplish for God. And if you're not careful, scarcity will come into your life, lack as a thief and take away everything that God is trying to place in your life and in your hands. So whatever you do, do it for the love of God. Give him your all. Whatever you do, whether in word, in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. So on this journey, and I pray that you make up in your mind that you want to squash, squash procrastination and say, God, here I am. I give it all to you. I want to give you my best. And I'm trusting that you will do the rest. Once again, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, whatsoever the hand find it to do, do it without might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. So give him your all while you have time. So squash procrastination. And one of the methods is signing yourself in everyday practice, some goals, things that you're going to do in your day that help you keep you on track doing it God's way. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And we're going to pray for you as we close out. Let us close our, head, bow our, close our eyes and bow our head. Dear Father, we give you glory. And we'll give you all the honor for this time that we've shared in your word. God, we, we know that we still have work to do. And let us, God, not become slack. Let us not become a lazy. Give us strength to overcome excuses and reasons of why we can't. And stand on the promises of why we can. So I pray that healing will go forth through our cities, our countries our neighborhoods. We pray for the war 
that is happening in Russia and Ukraine, we pray, God, for peace. We pray for peace in our communities and our neighborhoods where crime is happening, violence, or human violence is happening right in our neighborhoods and country. We pray, God, that your peace will come up on the battlegrounds that are in this world. We ask God that you will give us the equipment as men and women of God to be busy, to be productive for your work, labor for you, to give you all. For this, we give you glory, and we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to IAP Bible Study. Once again, this is Pastor A.K. Parham, and much love.